Hello and welcome to another All Alive episode. This time we're going to talk about headphones sensitivity and we're going to do some math and figure out how to use that sensitivity in a mixing session. Coming up. So what is sensitivity? Sensitivity actually explains how efficient a system or a speaker is in converting electrical power into sound pressure. For example, uh, as for X, they have 108 decibel SPL at one kilohertz sine wave for one volt. That's data that is available in the manual and also on the web page. But the question is how to use this sensitivity information in setting up your monitoring chain or actually achieving a desired SPL level in your, in your monitoring. To do that, we have to do some math. Our thinking about ideal SPL levels on the headphones when you're doing mixing jobs and stuff like that is based on Bobcat's K-metering. So K12, K14, K20, doesn't matter which one, they all basically say the same thing, which is you should have your volume or SPL uh, set at 83 dB. Now, when it comes to a room design or, well, just SPL in a room, uh, you have two, diff two speakers, two sources, and when they are combined together, they yield out 83 or actually 86 dB. So if you have 83 from one speaker and 83 from the other speaker in the same room, when it sums up, it's gonna end up being 86 dB. In a headphone monitoring system, it's a bit different. Now you have two, two speakers completely separated. It's like if you have traditional monitoring one speaker in one room and the other speaker in another room. So the medium, the air is not the same, meaning that the SPL will not sum up. So based on that, we think and believe that the optimal SPL level that should be in each cup uh, is actually 86 and not 83 dB. Now we're gonna dive into this and how to actually calculate it and how to use it. You can find sensitivity information on our webpage and also in the manual that you got in your package. So we are using uh, volts to represent sensitivity because many manufacturers of gear, of amplifiers and interfaces are actually using DBU um, as the unit to represent, uh, well, basically sensitivity or efficiency of, of the amplifiers. So DBU stands for DB unterminated, meaning that there is no resistance at the end of the circuit. In our case, we have 108 dB SPL at one volt RMS at one kilohertz sine wave. So that is the reference point, one volt. Uh, but in reality, I hope you will never, never, ever listen to our headphones at 108 uh, dB, which is really loud and, and can actually hurt your hearing. It's an information that we need to calculate uh, the ideal SPL level, as, as mentioned before. To do that, you will also need the information about the interface or the, you know, the amplification part of your interface, or if you have a separate amplifier, you're gonna need that information. In our case, we use RME, so I'm gonna show you the process with RMEs. You need to find the output section uh, and basically analog outputs, obviously, right? So our headphones are analog, they don't have DSP, they don't have amplification inside or anything like that. So you need to plug them into an analog output on the interface. Many professional gear or even semi-professional will have more than one standard that they use. Um, so for example, RME will tends to use on all their in interfaces the high gain, the 4 dBU standard and the minus 10 dBV standard. But for now, all you need to understand is that the best possible setup for professional gear would be to use 4 dBU settings uh, or standard. The minus 10 dBV is actually used with uh, consumer gear. So try to avoid that as, as much as you can. So based on this, we can see that at 4 dBU, um, standard, this little thing is capable of producing 13 dBU at 0 dBFS. So 13 dBU at 4 dBU setting or standard. It's gonna change if you will switch to high gain, which is gonna yield out 
almost astonishing 19 dBU. And from this table, you can see that at 4 dBU, you have 9 dB of headroom, which is basically the maximum output. So 13 minus 4 dBU leaves you with 9 dB of headroom. And now, let's dive into math. To set your headphones to K-metering, this is the math required in case you are using RME interface. If you have something else, you just need to find this information from your booklets. So S4X are 108 SPL, as mentioned, at 1 kilohertz, which is at 2.2 dBU and terminated at 1 volt uh, RMS. Um, and the RME is capable of producing 13 dBU at 0 dBFS when it's set to 4 dBU settings. So you gotta be careful about how it's set up uh, as well. If that would be your channel, on the top you have 0 dBFS or basically where the signal will start to clip. So that is 13 dBU as mentioned over here. Then we need to drop down to 2.2, which is the goal. So 13 minus our goal, 2.2, leaves us with 10.8 dB reduction to get to 2.2 dBU. And at that, you will have 108 dB SPL with one kilohertz sine wave. And then we need to go further down to 86, which is, as mentioned before, I think the best possible SPL to have when you're trying to set up metering using headphones um, and to do that we need to go down another 22 so 108 right you're following all right so 108 minus an, again the goal which is 86 leaves you 22 dB reduction so when you put it together it gets to minus 32 8 so this is the total reduction needed um, to get to 86 dB SPL with one kilohertz. So the funny thing is, K-metering is not set up using um, one kilohertz sine wave, but it is used um, or calibrated using pink noise and switching from one kilohertz sine wave as a calibration signal to pink noise as a calibration signal is actually 10 dB change, roughly 10 dB change, as you will see right now using gear. All right, so let's put the math into real world. Right here, I have Studio One running, and I do have a tone generator with sine wave, one kilohertz, uh, already set up. All the levels are set to zero, so when I turn it on, you can see everything is at zero on the channel and also on the master bus. Zero dBFS uh, value, which with our headphones is pushing out 119 dB SPL. Um, and let me just shut this off a little bit because it really hurts my ears. So uh, that's the, the initial setup. From this, we got to get to 108 uh, dB SPL, uh, which is the, the information we have in our booklets in, in the manual and doing uh, 108 at 2.2 dBU, uh, which means that we have to drop down for 10.8, again, uh, based on the data from our interface. So the RME will push 13 dBU at zero dBFS, meaning we gotta go down 10.8 to be effectively at 2.2 dBU, which is actually one volt. I'm gonna prove that to you. Um, empirically, 10.8. So now when we play this, it's getting a lot more quieter. Uh, also on the monitoring chain, and we can check it over here on the SPL, uh, and we can see 108 dB SPL at uh, one volt. Now, just to double check that it is actually one volt, I'm gonna measure it over here. So you can see it's 1.008 volts. Um, let me actually check this real quick. Yeah, 1.0078 volt uh, RMS, or peak to peak is 1.4 uh, volts. So yeah, it is exactly as it should be. And here's proof, 108 
dbspl now to get lower to the 86 we need to you know subscribe back that as well so from 108 down to our goal which is 86 the difference is 22 so we need to uh, put that together so 10.8 plus 22 uh, comes down to 32.8 and we when we drop that signal down we can now see that the SPL with one kilohertz using S4X is 86 dB SPL. So the funny thing happens when you're trying to set K metering, which is based on a different signal. So it's not a one kilohertz signal, but it is uh, pink noise. So the moment I switch to pink noise, something funny happens, right? So if I go to pink noise, the RMS is now dropped for 10 dB. So now we need to move that up again. Uh, so as you can see, it's 76, 77 now, and if I switch back to, really quick, to sine wave, it's gonna be 86. So there's roughly 10 dB change, actually a little less, nine and something, um, between pink noise and one kilohertz sine wave. Now, side note, there are plenty of pink noise generators out there. Uh, you should know the crest factor of the pink noise. It could be anywhere between 3 and 12. Um, so you got to be careful with that. Uh, in our case, it's, uh, it's 9, 9 dB difference. So I, I can actually show that and you can do that as well. If you don't know these things, you can just, uh, I mean, if you don't know the numbers and you, and you don't want to play with math, you can use whatever RMS meter you have available. Um, and if I play around with it just a little bit, so you can see here it's, uh, it's showing minus 3 RMS with everything set to zero. And if I move to pink noise, the RMS drops for 10, roughly 10, a little less than 10, it's more like 9. But the point is that pink noise is not a stable signal, right? So 1 kilohertz is a very stable signal. Pink noise is just always smoothing around a little bit, so that's why the, the RMS is not going to be, um, you know, very exact. Uh, in general, it's 10 dB difference, so we need to fix that. Um, that's 10 dB. So, for example, if I redo this real quick, so 32.8 is going down. Oh, sorry, gotta fix this one as well. So we are at 76, 77, and now we gotta push it up again a notch for this handy bit change uh, between sine wave and the pink noise. And when we do that, we are now at 86 dB SPL using S4X headphones. Uh, and that is your K metering zero value. So you can now use that value as a zero reference for A12, K14 or K20. And I guess that kind of concludes it all. Thank you for watching and until the next time, stay safe and enjoy your holidays.